Just because I do not want something doesn't mean I'm angry. Or does it? How can aversion be considered a form of attachment? And why is aversion a form of anger? Hi, it's Margaret Maloney, and welcome to Season 3 of the Death Dhamma Podcast. I'm so glad you're here. And I'm so appreciative that you are part of my community. And yet, I seek not to be attached to the idea of the podcast or even to the idea of our community. And that's our topic this season, attachment, clinging and aversion. What happens when we really want something? What happens when we really don't want something? And what does it do to our suffering and dissatisfaction? Let's dive in and find out a little bit more with today's episode. With attachment, we are only trying to get things that we want. And once we have those things, we don't want them to go away. When we experience aversion, we push away, usually aggressively, the things that we dislike. Aversion refers to feelings of aggression, anger, and hatred. Let's spend more time considering aversion as angry and aggressive. The second noble truth states that there is an origin of suffering and that the origin of suffering is attachment to the three kinds of desire, desire for sense pleasure, kama tanha, desire to become bhava tanha, and desire to get rid of vibhava tanha, to want to get rid of something. That's aversion. You may also have heard the three poisons discussed or the three unwholesome roots. And these are greed, anger, and delusion. Well, the craving for sense pleasures fits with greed, while aversion is a form of anger. And that maps back to the definition of pushing something away aggressively. Releasing aversion is an inside job. Let's take a look or a listen to some passages from the Itivutaka. From Itivutaka 83. This was said by the Blessed One, said by the Arhant. So I have heard. There are these three inside stains, inside enemies, inside foes, inside murderers, Inside adversaries, which three? Greed is an inside stain, inside enemy, inside foe, inside murderer, inside adversary. Aversion is an inside stain. Delusion is an inside stain, inside enemy, inside foe, inside murderer, inside adversary. These are the three inside stains, inside enemies, Inside foes, inside murderers, inside adversaries. Aversion causes harm. Aversion provokes the mind. People don't realize it as a danger born from within. A person, when aversive, doesn't know his own welfare. When aversive, doesn't see Dhamma. Overcome with aversion, he's in the dark, blind. But when one abandoning aversion feels no aversion, for what would merit aversion, aversion drops away from him like a palm leaf from the stem. Okay, this is a good place to reflect on aversion as an inside stain, or as stated, an inside foe or adversary, murderer even. That's a pretty strong phrase, a murderer, but it's killing our chances to move forward in the Dhamma, which is killing our chances to have a release from suffering. Aversion arises from within our minds. You could say a self-generated emotion. There are many sources for aversion. Perhaps you had a bad experience with something or someone. Maybe last time you had a cold, it turned into pneumonia and it took you months to recover. It was a long and painful process. You don't want that again. And if you begin to feel like, once again, you have pneumonia, you might experience aversion. 
you want it to go away. Strongly, you want it to go away. Aggressively, you want it to go away. You had that experience once and you are not here for it now. No way, no thank you. Or maybe you've watched one of your elders go from illness to illness on what seemed to be a long, slow march toward death. And you don't want that experience. Most of us, we say things like, it's not death I'm afraid of, it's how I go. We all want to have that, you know, go to sleep one night and don't wake up kind of instantaneous death. That isn't how it is for everyone, right? So you don't want that experience of the, you know, illness and the impermanence of different parts of your body and your mind. And as you feel yourself aging, maybe you become angry and fearful and you want to bargain with your body and your karma and saying things like, I'll be fine as long as I can still walk, or I just don't want to be bedridden. I remember with my late mother-in-law, it was the wheelchair. She was in her late nineties. She was on a walker. She had taken another fall. She was weak. She was tiny and thin and weak. And the next step was going to be the wheelchair. And that was just the step too much for her. I will say too much for her. And so she was done. She was done and she stopped eating and she, she did pass away. There's the aversion that grows within you due to the treatment you've received from others, perhaps based on the perceptions others have that take root within you. In our most recent episode of the Death Dhamma podcast, Venerable Dihong openly and honestly discussed the physical and verbal abuse he received from his father and occasionally in his mother and how that planted the seed of aversion within him. He had thoughts such as, maybe I'm not really his son because who would treat his own son this way? Or maybe it is true and I'm not worthy of an education. Many of us in our teen years you know, and later take issue with our experiences and harsh words and actions from those we would wish to be our protectors make it worse. And in the case of Venerable D, he suffered from the verbal and physical abuse and having acne and then moving to a strange country, turned out to be the United States, where later in life I had the good fortune to meet him. And knowing that people were looking at him with his acne and finding it unattractive and all of these things came together into a lot of self-aversion, a lot of self-aversion. And then later he would go on and develop male pattern baldness. And as you can guess, that also triggered some aversion. And by the way, these things all happened before he was a monk. So when we have received harshness from others, it could make us more inclined towards our own self aversion. And of course, anger and aversion towards those who have been harmful toward us, right? Let's take a look at this part of the Iribuka passage again. Aversion causes harm. Aversion provokes the mind. People don't realize it as a danger born from within. A person when aversive doesn't know his own welfare. Especially that last line, a person when aversive doesn't know his own welfare. Hmm. Right? So we don't recognize our own value. We might not take good care of ourselves. We don't have self-love. We don't think highly of ourselves and we're not taking care of our own welfare because we don't recognize ourselves as valuable. Next, the next line, when aversive doesn't see Dhamma. When we are full of aversion, we are not taking the best physical and spiritual care of ourselves. We are not able to comprehend the Dhamma, and that means no release from suffering. So I think this is a good place for a recap. Aversion is a form of anger. 
Ultimately, it comes from within us. Even if we have been mistreated in a sense, not in a sense, we do, we own our aversion. And to be clear, I'm not saying it's your fault. This is not fault. This is not blame. This is our responsibility for our own growth and spiritual development. So it's not your fault that you have aversion. It's not a judgment on who you are as a person. It is a gentle reminder that no matter what has transpired, we are responsible for our own healing. And once we dig out those roots, the rewards are many, as stated in this passage. There are these three roots of what is unskillful. Which three? Greed as a root of what is unskillful. Aversion as a root of what is unskillful. Delusion as a root of what is unskillful. These are the three roots of what is unskillful. Another passage. One whose passion, aversion, and ignorance are washed away has crossed over this ocean with its sharks, demons, dangerous waves so hard to cross. There's that reminder. This might be in some ways easier to begin to understand, but it doesn't mean it's easy to always do. Continuing with the passage, free from acquisitions, bonds surmounted, death abandoned, he has abandoned stress with no further becoming. Ah, the ultimate release from suffering. Continuing, having gone to the goal, he is undefined, has outwitted, I tell you, the king of death. Okay, that's the goal. Yes, we want that. We get it. Aversion is unskillful. Aversion is part of the cause of suffering. Aversion is a form of anger. Now what? How? Listen to this. Put out the fire of aversion with goodwill. This is exactly what Venerable D experienced and what he shared with us. The Brahma Viharas, which are, you know, loving kindness, compassion, sympathetic joy, and equanimity. All of this will help us to address trauma that we suffer from past decades that has caused aversion to take root within you. Venerable D is a fan of the work of Sharon Salzberg. Me too, by the way. Specifically her book, Loving Kindness, The Revolutionary Art of Happiness. When we are experiencing aversion, we are not being kind to ourselves. Not just when you are unhappy with yourself. This is also the antidote for when you are feeling aversion towards others. You want to extend loving kindness towards yourself when you have negative or unkind thoughts towards others. And you want to wish loving kindness towards those others. Replace the thought of aversion with a thought of loving kindness. Or perhaps follow that negative thought with a thought of loving kindness. Be patient with yourself. Another form of loving kindness. Most of us will not be rid of our aversions overnight. I would love to hear from you, your thoughts, your suggestions, your own stories about attachment. So follow this link. I'm going to read it to you in a minute here to leave me a 90 second message with your ideas and suggestions. You can go to https colon forward slash forward slash www.speakpipe.com forward slash death underscore dhamma underscore podcast. I suppose you could also just use your favorite search engine to say speakpipe death dhamma podcast. And there you can record an audio message for me. And be sure to come over to margaretmaloney.com. That's M-A-R-G-A-R-E-T-M-E-L-O-N-I.com and join the community. You've been listening to the Death Dhamma Podcast with your host, Margaret Maloney. Thank you so much for being here. Come find me on margaretmaloney.com, M-A-R-G-A-R-E-T-M-E-L-O-N-I.com. And until we meet again, may you be well, may you be happy, May you be at ease and may you be free from suffering. 
Bye for now.